just had my 10x mentorship with Sherry Hamilton, CEO of Garden Enterprise. I'm Rhea, and here are my 18 lessons learned on today's topic, Drill the Team. Lesson 1. How can you accomplish the method, the manner, and the frequency of communication? Lesson 2. Set it up where you can schedule the when, the how, you're going to check in. Lesson 3. Example. I want to check in with you first thing in the morning after the morning meeting. And I want to set up the day for you, tell you what to expect from me for the day, and any last-minute questions from the day before. Or, I'm going to check in with you in the evening before we close up. See if we have any cycles open that we need to help you close. Any questions that come up, any problems that came up so that you can attain, you can train then on those. Lesson four, if it's not working, change it. Keep on adding until you find some way that it will work for you and it will work for the new heart and it is being effective. Lesson five, because after all, if it's not being effective, then we need to change the whole thing but decide when and how and how often, and then that way it is predictable. Lesson six, it gives the new person in line into you. You are their lifeline. It's you or whoever is literally, you are their lifeline to the company. Lesson seven, and if you don't keep that lifeline, they will drift, they will drift away. They will get disillusioned and they won't see a way to be successful. Lesson eight, in all of these communications and this method, methods, test their knowledge and understanding. Lesson nine, if they're on the phone and I'm saying, okay, ask them this or tell them that, and then ask the person what they heard you say, ask them what their understanding is of what you just told them, have them demonstrate back to you or mimic back to you or say back to you what you've just said to them and teach them to do that with others. Lesson 10. It's so easy to misunderstand these days, especially with the text messaging and emails. It is very easy to misunderstand when you're auto-correcting and you're shorthanding and you're putting symbols in email or emoji Communicating is not necessarily very specific, so there's a lot of room for interpretation. Lesson 11, and you want to be sure that if you're onboarding somebody to do things the way you want done, that they understand what you mean. Lesson 12, words have a lot of meanings and then it can be misunderstood. Lesson 14, so have a person repeat back to you what they think they heard you say what they think you want them to do, how they think you want them to say it. Lesson 15, Sherry said she had drilled this with a team that was going to be answering those calls and she would tell them what she would want them to say. And she said, okay guys, now you say it back. And she said they would scrub it off or they would substitute it or they would get it not quite right tone-wise or they would say something that would be totally incorrect. And it just takes a little time to actually get through and really make sure that that person is exactly saying what you are saying. Lesson 16, it is worth it at the end because if you can finally mold a person into an employee that you can trust to actually understand and duplicate you and then do what you ask them, then that person is worth much more than money. It is worth your sanity because one of her least favorite things is repeat, repeating herself. Lesson 17. And so if he can get somebody who can actually hear, understand, duplicate what she said and help them repeat it to the people that needs it, repeat it, that that person is so valuable. Lesson 18. You must test and you must test the knowledge and understanding. So those are my lessons learned. I hope you learned something. 
please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can also download a free section of my book, Apartment Prescription from 0 to 50 Apartment Units in 7 Years. If I've done it, so can you. Take care and God bless.